Stampers again. I am back with my second video in my Stamping Basics series. Now this series is all about the little tips and tricks that will help you either get started in stamping and card making or hopefully those of you that have been stamping for a long time will pick up some little tidbits to make it easier for you. You know, sometimes those of us that have been stamping for a long time assume that you guys know some of these basics that we just kind of take for granted and, and probably do without even thinking. So I decided to do this series to just kind of break down all the different products and tools and coloring methods and all that, bringing it back to the basics and teaching you how quick and easy stamping can be. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip the camera down and I want to just do a quick little chat about the different kinds of stamps that Stampin' Up! I have my 2017-2018 catalog open up here just to kind of point out um, because I know this does confuse a lot of people. So two different stamp sets here I want to talk about for just a second. Paisley's and Posies, if you read the description right here, it says 18 photopolymer stamps. Now photopolymer stamps are the kinds of stamps that we think of when we think clear. And you can see these are well loved, but they're considered a clear stamp. That's what photopolymer is. Now on the other hand, if we look over here to this All Things Thanks stamp set, it will say the name of the set, All Things Thanks, and the nine rubber stamps. Rubber stamps means just that. They're the red rubber that we think of when we think of rubber stamps. And then if we read a little bit further, it does say one number with a price wood blocks included, and then another price that says suggested clear blocks. So these come either what we like to say wood mounted or clear mounted. So a wood mounted stamp is exactly what it says. When, it, when you get it, and honestly, I never buy the wood mounted stamps. I like the clear mounted because of the storage. This one happens to only come in wood mounted. So it was the only one I had to pull out and show you. But a wood mounted stamp will come with your red rubber. It will have a peel off adhesive on it so that you can stick it to your wood block. And then it also comes with a sheet of stickers. And fortunately, I hadn't put this one on, so it worked out perfectly. Um, I always try, make sure you don't do it upside down. I used, I've done that many times. Try to center this the best you can. Um, but the one thing you want to keep in mind when you are stamping with wood mounted stamps like this, whether they're ones you mounted or you purchased mounted already, is what you see here is not necessarily where the placement is on the back. And I say that because from personal experience, I've had issues a lot of times where I go to stamp this and I'm looking here trying to figure out okay where do we want to stamp it bam right there and then I pull it up and it's not at all where I want it so don't assume this picture is the same as what this is that's just a little tip that's going to help you in all of your stamping know where your image is on the back so those are the rubber stamps wood mounted now on the other hand let's take a look at a set here this is called flying home but this is a rubber stamp set again. So it comes with the red rubber, but it's the clear mount one. So you do not get the wood blocks with it, okay? You need to have your own clear blocks. Now the beauty of this, you can get an assortment of these clear blocks and use them over and over and over. And this is where it really becomes a nice storage issue. Let's look at these two again, if we do them this way. Now if this was a regular stamp set, it would be this tall, but look at how much wider it is. I think it's three times wider than a, is it three? No, maybe it's just two. Two times wider than this. So when I store these on my shelf, these only take up half the space. So that's one reason why I like those. Um, but when you open up a rubber mounted one or a rubber stamp set that is clear mounted, again, you have to have these blocks. It will come just like this and you just punch out your images, okay? This sheet here would look the same way as if it was wood mounted. The only difference is when you would peel this off on the wood mounted one, you would have adhesive. So we'd peel it off, this would be adhesive and I could stick it to the wood block. On the clear mounted ones, when I peel this off, this is not adhesive, okay? It is kind of a sticky, 
I don't know what you'd even call this surface to tell you the truth, but it is made to be able to just stick, and it's not quite, no, it would work on there, just stick onto my blocks. So I stamp away with it, do whatever I want to do with it, peel it off, put it back in my case here to store it. So that is what the clear mounted rubber stamps are, but it's still the red rubber so you can't see through them. Now these also come with the sheet of stickers, okay? Well, I shouldn't call them stickers, they're labels. They're a little bit different um, than the sticker ones, but they do peel off um, and they are meant to go on the back of the stamp. Now, I will admit I never ever put mine on the back of the stamp because I feel they do not stick as well um, to, the, to the clear blocks. When you do that, and I know some people will kind of disagree with me and there's all kinds of things you can do out there to, to help them stick, but I personally, I never put those stickers on and now stick them on there. I can go ahead, stamp, clean it off and put it away. So those are your rubber stamps that are clear mounted. One other tip I wanna share with you when it has to do with the, the rubber stamps that are clear mount, one thing you will often see me do is actually cut them apart. If we look at the stamp case on here, we'll see that this image is the little pig, okay, we got some glare there, and this little piggy. But a couple of times I stamped it and I wanted just the pig or even just the words, this little piggy. I mean, it could be with any of these, little piggies because they're so dang cute. So I literally took my scissors and I cut the stamp apart. So now I can use just the words or I can use just the pig. The other, and actually if I ever want to use it together, which I probably will, because of the way I cut it, I can even put this all together. It fits right back there really good, press it on my block. Now you would never know it's cut and I can stamp with it as one image. The other thing I do quite often with my rubber stamps, kind of makes them look ugly, but you know how sometimes when you're stamping and you ink it up and you end up getting little marks outside of the image that you don't want, you're kind of picking up little pieces of the, um, the rubber that you don't want the ink on. This one here you can really see, let's see if I put on a block, maybe you can see it better. But I took my scissors and I trimmed it a lot. You can see kind of my little hack marks there with my scissors, but I cut off all the extra rubber that was around it. I tried to cut at a little angle, so it, you know, cutting outwards, so it kind of stayed nice and solid with the foam under there. But if you have stamps that are rubber and they're picking up what you don't want, trim them off. You can actually do that. I, I know a lot of people that use wood a lot, this one I did not trim, but a lot of people will trim it before they stick it to the wood block because you could really cut a lot closer here to this B, kind of come in and around that way and around. So if you like the wood ones before you mount them, um, trim them. But that will help you get a cleaner image without worrying about getting ink where you don't want it. That's the tips I have having to do with the, um, the rubber mounted. Oh, just so this video is not boring, we'll just show you this one card with the, this little piggy. I will feature this card in an upcoming video showing you how to do the barn door, but I thought it was just adorable. Here I did use the, this little piggy. I used it together, so when I mounted it, I put them on there together. And then when I slide it over, it says, loves you. And again, I was able to stamp that really nice and clean without worrying about picking up edges because of the way that I trimmed it. So I think that's all I have to share with you in regards to the rubber stamps. Let's talk about the photopolymer stamps. Let's talk about my favorite kind of stamps, and that's the photopolymer. I love these because you can see through them when you stamp. And there's a couple other little tricks I wanna show you as to why I like these. But the first thing I wanna show you is that we look at the stamp set. This is the Daisy Delight set. You can tell I have used it a ton. Um, if these stamps are stained, they're clean, but they're stained. Um, I always say if they're not stained, that doesn't mean they're loved. But your reds, reds or purples or those real deep colors like that um, are the ones that are really going to stain your stamps. No matter how quick you clean them, um, they're going to stain. So, so don't panic when that happens. That Just know that that's normal. So, I'm gonna stamp part of this card for you just to show you a few different tips um, of things, of reasons why I like the photopolymer stamps and kind of give you some fun ideas that you can do with them. So first off, we're gonna stamp these stems in here. Now if you notice, I have them going different directions. 
the way I can do that, because of this being photopolymer, I can, when I lay this stamp down here, look at how fun this is. I can bend it however I want and then stick it on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp it. Before I stamp it, um, take note that I have the piercing pad underneath. Whenever you use photopolymer, you want to use the piercing pad because that gives you that little bit of cushion that your rubber stamps have um, built into them. Photopolymer don't. So this will help you get a better image. Um, so why don't we just go ahead and we're gonna stamp one right there. And then I'm gonna just reach over, let's see, get my cleaning pad here. I'm just using the, the Stampin' Scrub and I sprayed some Stampin' Mist on one side and we're gonna clean it and dry it on the other side. But then I can take this and we can go ahead and we'll just bend it a little different way. Um, Cause we want these flowers to look like they're blowing in the wind, but that they're not, um, all perfectly straight in the same way. I guess I kind of bent that the same way, but I'm not gonna stamp all of it because the, this um, segment is more about telling you some of the advantages of the photopolymer. Now, when you stamp the flower, this um, is probably another reason why I love these stamps because it is so easy to see where you're placing it. I've inked it up in crushed curry. I can see right through it to put it where I want. And then I'm gonna take the detailed part and we're gonna use soft suede. I got so many pads sitting here. Let's make, hope we get the right one. And again, this is really easy to stamp where I want it because I can see where I'm going. I'll make sure I don't get my, my head in the way. But it's that easy to stamp these images. With the red rubber, you're gonna kind of be guessing where you're gonna put them. Um, same thing goes with the two pieces of these little flowers I have in here. And as long as I'm showing you, I wanna show you what I did down here to kind of make this grass. Okay, it's the same stamp that these bigger branches or um, little you know flowers are on, but I took it, and like I said, I don't wanna finish this whole stamp, but we'll take the pear pizzazz and I inked it up and I just stamped it a whole bunch of times down here on the bottom. And I just kept going and going. And you just keep going until you have it filled in like you want it. So you can see the nice color down there. Um, so that's, you know, kind of some of the beauties of the photopolymer. I was able to bend these. I was able to see through them real easy. And then another little trick, when you go to stamp words, and again, one of the benefits of the photopolymer, say we want to use this thank you stamp to make sure I get it straight on my card. When I put it on my block, I line up my block on my grid paper. So I have a straight line going down here and then I can see through it and I can see to place this right on there nice and straight. And then I always double check it. Um, now usually I have my head like straight over it, so we'll see how good I did. So I ink it up and then I stamp it on my grid paper. Again, lining one of the edges up along with the edges on the grid paper and you'll be able to see that I put that on crooked, which happens all the time. So then we can go ahead, we can peel it back off. And I do all of this, and we're gonna try to do this without getting the head in the way. Um, I do this all the time. I will practice with it until I get it where I want it. Um, there we go. See how nice and straight that is now? So when I go to stamp on my card, which I'll make sure I ink this one up a little bit better, I can line up my block on the edge of the cardstock, whether it's the top or the side. Um, you know, I might have to go up a little bit, down a little bit, but I can eyeball it and it just helps me place this image really nice and straight because I was able to make sure it was straight on my block. And then again, since these are clear, I'm going to go ahead and add for your kindness and we can go ahead and see right through it and we can plop that real easy right underneath the thank you. So that's some of the, the tips for the photopolymer. Um, I will tell you the more you use them, let's clean this one off a second so I don't get too much ink. Like you can see, this stamp has been well used. Um, eventually they become not real sticky and they don't like to stick to your stamps very much. And that's simply from, you know, you got oil on your hands, you're touching them, they're picking up lint, they're picking up dust, all that kind of stuff that makes them not stick. You know, you'll notice as they get old, they don't stick as good. Take them to your sink, a little palm olive dish soap and some warm soapy water, wash them, rinse them, let them dry, 
and they will stick just as good as they did when you first got them. So those are a few tips for photopolymer. Oh wait, one other tip. Because I was showing you um, this stamp and you know how we can put it on here and bend it, sometimes you will get these longer stamps that, um, especially ones that have to be die cut. Okay, so the die is made to cut it out and it's the regular shape of it. And what has happened, sometimes people will take the stamp and they'll put it on their block and they'll stamp it, I got ink everywhere here, and they'll stamp it and then they'll wonder why the die does not fit it right. It just, it's like, you know, the stamp's wrong, the die's wrong. Well, it's because when you put it on here, you didn't put it straight. So if you want a stamp, especially a long skinny one, to, to be stamped perfectly straight or the way the stamp is intended to stamp, the best thing to do is just drop this down on your scrap paper and then pick it up with your block because now we know it's on here how it's intended to be and if there's a die to go with it, it will fit perfectly. So that's just another tip. So I hope that information was helpful for you understanding the three different types of stamps that Stampin' Up! carries. Um, our images will generally come in the red rubber, wood mounted or clear mounted, or the photopolymer. So um, depending on what set you like, you're gonna get one or the other. If you have any questions on the information I shared or about Stampin' Up! or stamping in general, make sure you get a hold of me. You can leave me a comment or message me. Stampin' Up! is my full-time job. I've been doing this for over 23 years now and I love what I do. And I love to teach and I love to share. But most of all, I love to show people how quick and easy you can make gorgeous handmade cards for all of your friends and family. So if you're looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you need one of our catalogs, let me know. I would be happy to send you one. And again, help you in any way that I can. I look forward to sharing more Stamping Basics videos with you, plus a lot of other creative videos. So have a stamp happy day.